Okay, peace family. Michelle from Super's Farm here. So I am out in the raised bed garden this morning and I'm fertilizing the garlic right now. I put down some blood meal and I'm just watering it in. I side dress the bulbs and then I water it in. I usually time this with the rain, but we haven't had rain for at least a couple weeks now, um, maybe going on two weeks. And I've been trying to fertilize the garlic pretty regularly um, because garlic is thirsty, as they say. Um, right behind the garlic, I also have Brussels sprouts down there at the end and I side dress those as well. So I'm also watering that in. So today I'm just taking you along with me as I um, just take care of some things in the garden like fertilizing and I think I'm gonna try to drop those shallots that I'm still holding on to. So thanks for watching family. We're Supers Farm. Uh, we are new homesteaders. We're going into our third year um, but every day we're learning something, so that's why I continue to say we're new homesteaders. I think in order to be, you know, consider yourself a true homesteader, you probably need a lifetime of this lifestyle. So anyway, if that's something you're interested in, we appreciate you following us and just um, going along with us with our journey of learning how to live this lifestyle. Again, we're not telling you what to do. We're just sharing with you what we're doing. So we'll see you soon, family. All right, so I have the fish fertilizer and um, I kind of do a combination of um, fertilizing products, I guess you could say. I will either use the fish fertilizer or the blood meal. And this is a bucket that I keep in the garden. I have it also in the in-ground garden. And the purpose of the bucket is I just leave it out and catch the rainwater. I have like leaves and old plants and stuff in there and I just let it soak and sit and basically make a very diluted fertilizer. So I'll go through every now and then. Like I said, I keep that bucket in the garden. So if I, if I see something needs to be watered, I'll just pull from that bucket on a regular basis. But whenever I'm intentionally fertilizing, I will use the blood mill and top dress or side dress whatever needs the fertilizing at the time um, and then also the fish fertilizer everything gets fish fertilizer um, and it's just a real mild um, quick absorbing fertilizer just to to keep the plants healthy you can think of it like taking a multivitamin for your plants so the fish fertilizer really does go a long way. You only need about a tablespoon per gallon. So that's what I have in this watering can here. And I'm gonna use this watering can and fertilize the green stalk. This is actually mint here. It's a lime mint and it's not supposed to be red or purple. I think it's actually pretty, you know, beautiful the way it is, but um, <laughs> I think that's due to me just basically um, neglecting the plant. However, like I said, I like it. I'm going to go ahead and fertilize it. I want to transplant this. This is a lime mint and this is a Thai mint. I got these from um, a local nursery here near my house. And I also picked up these rosemary plants and I've had them for maybe about a month now and I just stuck them up here at the top of the green stalk to, um, you know, to get watered and I liked them there, but that's not their permanent home. And then also I have Swiss chard doing pretty good here. And uh, the next row is parsley. These are mustard greens. Then I have cilantro. I've been telling myself, come harvest the cilantro, and I have not done that, so maybe I'll get to it today. That last little tomato plant looks like the frost finally got it, which is okay. I didn't have high hopes for it anyway. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I need to find something to tuck in on the bottom row there because that was all of those cherry tomatoes. So once you get your fertilizer, fertilizer diluted, then you just pour it in the top tier here. 
we pour it in the top tier and the way this green stalk works is um, it will trickle down to the other little pockets all right i'm also going to come over here back to the garlic and just do a quick sort of you know run through with the with the fish fertilizer it's not too much for the garlic the garlic can take it all right so i'm over here in the celery bed now and same thing i'm just going to fertilize with the fish fertilizer um you know not anything too complicated you just basically want um i try to i try to like get the leaves wet because the plants will absorb the nutrients through their leaves um, if you can get it on the underside, that's even better. But, um, so this is a collard green. Well, she's looking pretty good. I just tucked her in because I didn't have anywhere else to put her because I had planted the other ones in the green stalk and this one is doing much better than the ones in the green stalk. So here are the onions that I started planting this week. I didn't finish. I think I will try to finish that today. Um, and... Anyway, so I'm just going to continue to go through the garden real quick and give a quick little douse of fish fertilizer and then we'll move over to the um, end ground garden and see what's going on over there. But before we do that, look who I see on duty. You are definitely welcome, sir. <laughs> he probably was sleeping like, hey, wait a minute, lady. <laughs> <laughs> all right so i pulled back the um the insect netting because i want to um, water these really well you can see the soil is really dry um i hadn't really watered these too much i was mainly letting the rain water them but like i said intentionality is my word for this season so i'm watering everything else fertilizing everything else why not hope my little friend takes shelter <sighs> yeah lizards are pretty awesome in the garden they eat a lot of the um insects all of the like the pests and stuff so i haven't really had too much of a problem with um, these containers there were some of course caterpillar worms and you know moths and stuff like the normal stuff you're going to get regardless but it wasn't like it was decimated i think the biggest problem that i've had with these containers is um some of the seeds didn't germinate so i mean that has nothing to do with the elements that's either me or the seed so once the seeds did germinate, these guys that have grown, you can see they're doing pretty good. I need to go in and harvest some of the radish. I think I've let the radish go a little too far, but it's okay. So I'll show you this first bed are turnips. Um, this is a golden turnip and it's looking pretty good. I will harvest that probably very soon, maybe in the next week. These are white turnips. They are called hackery turnips, I think, or something like that, H-A-K-U-R-E-I. And they're looking pretty good as well. I did plant some radish in the corners, like, um, you know, of the beds, but they're kind of slow, slow, slow boogie. All right, here is my romaine bed. And I'm gonna fertilize this bed today. Looks like my little friend is gone. That's okay, he'll be back. This are the radish bed. And I have harvested quite a few radish out of here, but then quite a few of them haven't germinated yet. Or they just not going to, I don't know. But look at this. This is the, um, I think this is the China Rose. Or maybe this is the black one. I'm going to go ahead and pull this. This might be the black one. Yeah. Black radish. Let me rinse it off. 
All right, so I cut it with my pocket knife just to show you that it's black on the outside and white on the inside. Let's see what it tastes like. Do you cringe when people eat on camera? Mmm. <laughs> I had to pause the video because I was chewing for a while. <laughs> but um, it started off really kind of mild and subtle. And then, whoa, it's a radish. It's not bad. It's my first time growing the black one. And I like it. I like it a lot. All right, guys, look who I ran into. Mr. Super. Yeah, what's going on? Nothing. How are you? Want to say something to the people? I'm just finishing up. You just missed me up the hill. Just putting a little brace on the end of the fence, connected to the post of the gate on the entry. It's been shaking. Maybe I need to dig it out and put some more concrete. Hmm. I just feel like a few spots up there loose. All yeah. right. Moving up to. It. I was checking on the raised bed garden. I'm going to the in ground right now, see if I need to fertilize what's in the greenhouse. All right, we'll see you later. All right, guys, so let me cover up my license plate. I don't know, they say you can look up a person by their license plate. Anyway, so um, y'all don't see him too much. Super works full time off of the homestead, so you know if he's doing a project, he's doing it, getting done, and going on to the next. So, anyway, let's see what's going on in the in ground. So, that one little melon that was hanging on <laughs> has succumbed to our, we've had four nights of deep freeze. So yeah, it's gone, gone. Maybe I'll open it and see what, what it looks like and give it to the chickens. But the carrots are coming along nicely. Super planted these. A little heavy handed in some places, but looking good. All right guys, so here is the in-ground garden. I mostly or only planted in the greenhouse. Super did plant some rows outside, but mm -mm, I had to be realistic about my about my abilities. <laughs> so everything is actually looking pretty good in here. I've got collards, cabbages, and daikon in here. And I have some okra that's wrapping up. I'm just trying to save the seeds. So everything is looking good. I'll probably go ahead and just fertilize this back row here. This back row. I'll just fertilize that and um, and that'll be it for today. Again, thank you guys for following Supers Farm. We appreciate you. Um, may you have all of the success and blessings on your own journey and we'll talk to you soon, family. Peace.